After looking at a bunch of paint swatches, the customer and I decided to go with Cabot Semi-Transparent. I got the base and I mixed it uh, redwood. This will give Mini Cooper the red texture, or the red color rather, of the Fox Red Labrador Retriever, but the semi-transparent will allow the wood grain to still show through. Now I'll have to do my cleanup with mineral spirits because it's oil-based. I'm gonna do a little time-lapse of putting this on and you can see what it looks like. Hi, since we talked last, I stained our puppy with uh, semi-transparent Cabot uh, Redwood and <clears throat> I got some on the platform. So I took my finger sander and my Dremel and I cleaned everything up around his paws and all around his tail to make sure that the platform was a U um, universal color of the wood. And then I took um, sparurethane and stained the very bottom of it. And then I set it on these little spacers here on top of some paper towels, uh, or actually I was on a piece of cardboard at the time. And then I carefully trimmed around and stained the, or not stained, I carefully sealed the bottom of this with the spar urethane and so now it's drying and my next task is going to be to take uh, this acrylic black paint and paint his nose and then i'm going to take uh, this acrylic brown and i'm going to uh, detail his eyes just a little bit and then um, i'll give some thought to maybe putting a very fine line of black in places where I'd like shadows. Like maybe to separate the tail just a little bit from the paw there. Um, I may trace underneath the mouth here to give a little more distinction to the jowls. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna start with black and paint the nose. We'll get a little black. And for this one, I'm gonna use a number 10 that's shaped like this. If you can see it from the side here, it's very flat, comes to a point. So I'm able to, uh, to get good detail on edges, but still get quite a bit of paint in uh, the brush. I'm making sure that I cover the brown up inside the nostrils. I'm using all of the excess paint that's in the uh, the nostril channel to not only catch the drip, but just to keep me going as I continue to paint around his little nose. Here we go. We've got a doggy snoot. I think he's kind of cute. Get some water here to drip my brush in. I'll try to get 
try to always keep my brushes standing in water. I rinse them a little bit and then it's okay to, I've discovered to just leave them standing in that muddy water for a little bit. Next, um, I want something I can control a uh, very fine line with. Uh, so I think I'm gonna use one of these very pointed brushes, uh, but I think that number seven is too big. Let's see. Um, I've got a five, do I have a three? Oh, that's a one, but it's not, it's not very pointed. So let me go back to, wait a minute, here we go. Oh, I just got doggy nose on me, look at that. There we go. Here's a three. This is the one I want. And this is what I'm going to use uh, to put brown in the eyes. Right now I got to wipe doggy snot off of my knuckles. He snot on me. Sure did. All right. So, brown now. And what I'm going after is an uh, almond shape that's similar in size on both sides. And I've got a bit of a challenge here because when I carved it, the eyes aren't exactly the same size. So here, I'm only going to come down part way, something like this, uh, to uh, control how far down the iris is in his eye. trouble seeing it's raining so I'm having a difficult time under the cover here of seeing the difference between the brown and this semi-transparent redwood so I'm got a little flashlight here to help me see a little better what I'm doing but I think I'm going to have to do it again out in the bright light. I just cannot tell. The colors are so close to each other. But that is true for the doggy. He, um, his eyes almost disappear into his fur. The colors are so close. At least that's what I'm telling myself. When I go back to the pictures, if that is not the case, then I'll put a little black into this brown and give it a darker value. But this will get a good base on it and then I'll go get my reference photo and I'll get some more light. I think it's stopped raining now. Seems like that turned out pretty good. Okay. And I want a really fine, 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 fine line of black. So I've almost got no paint on my brush. But I want a tiny little dab of black down in there, kind of making a, a bit of a triangle. Kind of like that. I think I'm going to keep going. And as the brown mixes with the black, that's a good look. <laughs> oh, 
Well, that's a happy little accident, as Bob Ross would say. run with that. I'm going to do the same thing for the tail. I'm going to get a little bit of this brown and a little bit of this black and make a shadowy, one more black, a shadowy brown. Back here for this. Separate his tail from his forelock. A little bit of a shadow. And we'll do the same thing under his chin here. Kind of make it a blend in a little bit of a dirty mouth. What have you been eating, Cooper? You got, you got something on your mouth there, buddy. So what is that? What have you been into? There we go. That'll define his jowls just a little bit by giving that some shadow right there. And then we'll do a little bit here on the ear, and kind of separate it from the face. Donkey Wonky. Do it around the back of his ear. Just kind of define where the ear actually is a little bit, and then smudge it. Doggy do that little, little darker in that corner, a little darker. Yeah, darker. There he goes. Hi, Doug Cooper. Good doggy.